Okay, I think it's time to share with you how to build your YouTube channel in 2021. I have written some notes down over here. So let's go over to my desk because if you are trying to build a YouTube channel this year around your passions or around your work, you're gonna need a little bit of guidance from someone who has done it before. And I've done it where it has actually brought me leads and sales and clients and customers to my business over and over again. I've got videos that I've put on YouTube that still bring me leads to this day and they have been on YouTube like five, six, sometimes even seven years. It's kind of crazy. I actually had to turn some of the videos off because I was like, I don't want leads for that business anymore because <laughs> I changed my business. So I'm actually going to go through 11 steps, like 10 main ones, but then there's this bonus one at the end that if you don't do that, then all the other stuff doesn't matter. So make sure you stick to the end of this, okay? If we haven't met, hey there, I'm Tracy Rose. And if you are looking to build your brand or your business, utilizing videos and YouTube especially, then make sure you subscribe to this channel because I have a whole lot more videos that will really help you do that. Okay, we're gonna have to have a serious little talk here because number one is you actually have to start filming. That seems kind of funny that I would have to even say that, but a lot of people have these ideas of starting a YouTube channel and then we go and do like the keyword research and figure out what's trending and what they should do videos on, which I'll get to in another step. But then when I give them all the gold, they then don't go and actually film the videos. <laughs> and let me explain to you why. It's like a form of mental self-sabotage. Suddenly your mind tries to keep you safe and is like, no, I look too horrible in the video or you get full-on comparitis. I get that too. But you just have to get over your own stuff and just press the record button. Whether you're using your phone, whether you're using a camera, just get started. You know, the people that are most successful, it's not often because they're the most talented. It's because they literally just took the steps towards doing the work. It's like the little steps forward. You do that a hundred times and all of a sudden you realize you're so much further ahead of people who actually have talent but didn't press the record button and film themselves. And you know why I know this? Because I've actually done this in two different industries. When I started my baby business, I was doing birth coaching. So I was teaching, uh, oh, that was my friend's dog that I minded. <laughs> So when I was teaching these birthing classes, I actually wasn't a very experienced birth teacher. I didn't have that many clients before I even started this YouTube channel. There are a gazillion birth coaches that are way more qualified and more experienced than I was, but guess what? They weren't filming videos. So guess whose videos were getting watched over half a million times. This channel got over a million views so, so quickly. Some videos were going viral in different countries and all because I pressed the record button and started filming and doing videos on topics that I knew people were asking questions about and also topics that I felt quite passionate about. And that leads me into step number two. What I want you to do when you are planning out you know, the content that you're gonna put in your YouTube channel. You wanna to plan to do a combination of content. Searchable content, content that you care about, and trends. And the way that you find out about what all those things are is doing some research. I have some videos on keyword research, which I will put in the description below, but there's a couple of different tools and strategies that I use for searchable content. You could even go into Facebook groups in your niche and just look at the questions that people ask over and over and over and if you could do videos that are answering those questions then go do a video on it so for me I know there's a whole lot of people who are trying to work out how to grow a YouTube channel this year so of course now I'm doing a video on it there's also trends that happen in industries there might be some new lighting and camera gear that comes out how about we don't yell in the back of my video <laughs> Now, when you're filming your videos, make sure that your intro is something that is very interesting for people or eye-catching or makes them realize, that, oh, I've got to watch this video. Don't talk about yourself in the beginning. Don't talk about how amazing you are. Don't talk about like, hey guys, welcome back to today's video. You know, I was just thinking that like, maybe I should do a video on blah, 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 blah. Like, no one cares about you yet. <laughs> make sure that you're thinking about who is watching the video and tell them exactly what what they're going to get in the video and then deliver on that promise. 
Now, can you see this here? This is an audio book that I'm listening to at the moment called Super Fans by Pat Flynn. And it is so cool. It's really interesting though, because I feel like that I inadvertently did a lot of the things that Pat is suggesting in the book on my first channel. And it's talking about, you don't necessarily need a gazillion fans or a million fans. You just need a thousand super fans. Now I know when you're growing a YouTube channel, a lot of people are focused on the vanity metrics like, oh, I've got 10,000 subscribers or 100,000 subscribers or a million subscribers. Like I get that, but I wanna just quickly mention to you something that I found really, really interesting. I know some people that have a couple of hundred thousand subscribers. And out of those couple of hundred thousand subscribers, they're not actually able to make a full-time income from their YouTube channel. When I figured out that this was happening, it literally blew my mind. I couldn't understand it because I had a channel with only a couple of thousand subscribers on my very first channel. And I had continuous clients coming to me from all around the world. So building a full-time income actually doesn't mean that you need to have hundreds or thousands or millions of subscribers. It really depends on, are you providing good information to the right audience? Do they love you? Are they making a real deep connection with you? And do they share your stuff to other people so that people end up coming to you? This is called attraction marketing. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about this. Let me know in the comments below, actually. Do you want to know more about attraction marketing? Because this is a really interesting topic. Again, I didn't need that many fans or subscribers or even the subscribers to my email list to make a full-time income online when I first started online marketing. Super interesting topic. So let me know if you want some more lessons and content and videos on that. Okay, what have I done? This one, this one, intro, super fans. Okay, let's talk about the thumbnails. Kind of funny. So I didn't even realize how big a deal thumbnails are. I was listening to Mr. Beast the other day. Now he is one of the biggest YouTubers on the planet, like over 50 million subscribers, like just incredible. He's not really my niche, but my kids are obsessed with him. And because he has over 50 million subscribers, I was like, hmm, let me pay attention to this guy. <laughs> and so maybe I don't watch his videos for like my full on entertainment, but I'm watching him because I'm trying to analyze him, right? And at first glance, he seems like these videos are kind of silly and funny and crazy but when I've heard him speak about how he's grown his YouTube channel he really is like a freaking genius at this stuff okay it was really interesting to learn how much time and effort that he put into creating his thumbnails like I was just like oh his thumbnails look like a kid drew them but do you know how much time he spends on these thumbnails because the thumbnail is what gets people to click on your thing no matter how good your content is, no matter how amazing your tips are, no matter how incredible your filming is or your editing, if someone is not attracted to your video because the thumbnail is not attractive for them to go, hmm, I need to click on that, you're just not going to get the views, you're just not going to grow your channel. So thumbnails is a really important thing. So spend some time learning about what makes a good thumbnail and then also going and having a look at your analytics, which I'm going to get to in a moment. But first of all, let's look at the next step to growing your YouTube channel in 2021 and beyond. The next thing is we're going to talk about is editing. No, we're not. <laughs> The next thing we're going to talk about is audio and lighting. I haven't always had a microphone set up and even when I got one, most of the time I would actually forget to use it. <laughs> but as long as you're not standing in like a hall where it's super, super echoey or somewhere where the background noise is really annoying. My friend who was filming on her phone, her phone just had like this humming, buzzing sound underneath her voice. It was honestly like hard for my ears to listen to. I'm going to quickly show you my office here. So this is a big thing that I learned in radio about acoustics and sound and stuff like that. If your room has a lot of surfaces and furnishings, then that will make the sound a bit better. Whereas say like this floor 
was maybe like tiles or timber flooring. The sound in here might be a little bit worse. I've also got furnishings here. I usually have like a rug hanging over there as well. So even though I'm not actually using a microphone, I'm just using the microphone on this camera. It's not that bad. I am actually getting a new microphone. <laughs> so hopefully it will be a little bit better. You can actually get one of those little tiny lapel mics, which actually just hook up to your t-shirt. I'm pretty sure one of my kids broke mine. So that's just not why I'm not using mine today. Now in terms of lighting, did you see there's a big window over there and I have the light facing towards me. I also have a ring light up here and a little lamp. It just means that the video is just a light enough color that you can actually see my face. There's no like deep shadows. I find it's just more pleasant to watch. The next thing I wanna talk about is editing. Now I know there's a lot of people that think, oh my gosh, I can't do editing or that's too big a job or they kind of bypass it, but you really do need to put some effort. Look. You don't have to do the editing yourself if you don't want to. Go pay someone to do it. I don't want to waste any of your time by you having to listen to all my ums and ahs and like big sighs and <laughs> coughing or like random words that I'm going to stumble over. Again, you don't have to take all that out if you don't want to. No one minds if you leave a mistake in here and there, but you do want to make your video nice and sharp and succinct because, hey, we're vying for people's time. Now, personally, I started just editing on, oh my gosh, I started using Windows Movie Maker. This is when I had like my very first laptop. Then I moved to iMovie on my first Mac. Then I started using iMovie on my phone as the app. That was like a random fly that went past my head. <laughs> Welcome to Australia. Now I'm currently using Final Cut Pro, which I'm also teaching my daughter how to use. You know, you could hire someone to do it for you. I know that I offer that as part of a package for my own clients because I know that that is something that really holds them back. Or what you could do is hire someone to teach you how to edit. Maybe they edit your first couple of videos, show you how they've done it, and then you can just copy that. That's a really cool way to do it. If you're just doing videos for business, you don't need to be doing like cinematic filmmaking. Unless you're doing a channel about photography and filmmaking. Oh, I'm getting sweaty. It'd be hot here today. Okay, now carrying on from editing, the other thing that I want you to add is music. And maybe a couple of other elements. Here's where some people get stuck is that they start using just music they've found anywhere and then they'll get a copyright claim on YouTube and YouTube will not like you if you do that, okay? So you don't wanna do that. Adding music or adding a little bit of elements like things going along the screen, making it visually interesting will keep people's attention longer in your video. If you wanna know where I get my music from and all the things that I add, I use Envato elements which I pay a yearly subscription for and then I also use epidemic sound now you could just use one or the other in terms of their sound stuff but because I'm doing lots of different types of videos I'm teaching my daughter how to use it for her channel and she's becoming a little bit creative we're kind of trialing different things so again you only need one of these if you're just going to do the music sort of stuff because a lot of the text and things you can add in using iMovie or Final Cut Pro I will link those below if you want to go and have a look at those Okay, we're up to number nine. This is a really big thing that a lot of people forget. You wanna be able to create community on YouTube. Here's a couple of things that will really help you build your channel. Make sure whenever you have your favorite YouTubers, make sure you subscribe to their channel, click on the notification bell so that you get notified when they upload a new video. And when the video goes live, go comment on their video. And then if you see some other people commenting in the comments and you wanna to reply to their comments, like go be active in the community because here's what happens, people get Get curious about oh who's that and then they will go check out your channel and your profile make sure that your channel is actually set up properly so that it looks all nice so that when someone maybe comes to your channel you could gain a new subscriber or a new follower just because you're being active in the community another thing that you want to do is if somebody comments on your video make sure that you go and reply to their comments now I've made this mistake in the past I don't know why I wasn't trying to be rude 
I ignored people. I swear it was like a self-sabotage thing, okay? I don't know whether I was embarrassed to reply to people. It's really weird, isn't it? Whatever. If people are taking the time to comment on your videos, please take the time to go reply to them. They will be stoked. This is how you create those super fans. Okay. Oh my god, that random reply is so annoying. Okay, this is where a lot of people think, hey, I've done all this stuff, I don't know why my channel's not growing. Well, have you looked at your channel analytics? So let me give you an example. Say you think, hey, this video is getting heaps of views, but why is my subscribers not growing? Or maybe you're getting views on one particular video, but not any of your other videos. In your analytics, YouTube will classify a view if someone has watched 30 seconds of a video. I have been quite surprised sometimes when I've seen a video of mine that's maybe 10 minutes long and someone's only watched less than two minutes of it and I'm like, what? That makes me feel really cranky because I've taken all this time, made all this effort, and then I'm like, people are not watching it. I'm not cranky at them, I'm cranky at myself. Like, did I not make the video interesting enough? What have I done wrong here? So I want you to go look at your analytics and if it's showing that people are only watching a minute or two of your videos, then work out a way you can increase the watch time. Analyze, was my intro good enough? Was my video interesting enough to keep people watching? Were my steps clear enough? Was it clear that I was going to provide a value all the way through the video? Was my video visually interesting enough because I provided things coming across the screen that kept people's eyes interested while watching the video? There's lots of other things that you can look at in YouTube analytics as well. I'm going to do some more videos on that because there's so much that you can understand from your analytics even from the very beginning. Another thing that you can glean from your YouTube analytics is that you could look at hey what's my most popular videos or what's my most viewed videos from the last month and then have a look at sort of what's trending on your channel if you see maybe one or two videos that are getting more and more views and they're even more recent then go to a follow-up video on those videos do another version of that video or an extended video on that same topic all I can say is YouTube analytics is important more important important than what I think a lot of people think. So sometimes what I do is I get people started with their YouTube channels. Maybe I've set it up for them. Maybe I'm doing some coaching with them and then they'll come back a few months later, three, six or 12 months later, where I will help them understand the back end of their YouTube channel, go through the analytics with them, tell them what's important. Okay. And the last thing that you want to do, you really want to make sure that you do this to grow your YouTube channel in 2021 is you want to be consistent. I've heard differing views on whether the YouTube algorithm really thinks that this is such a big deal. But what I will tell you is that I do know who thinks it's a big deal and it's your audience. If they know that they can rely on you because you're going to release a video every single week at about the same time, they will continue watching you more than if you weren't consistent. And how do I know this? Mm, because I've done the mistake myself. <laughs> I actually was so good at doing YouTube in the beginning. I was consistent. I did good thumbnails. I did all the stuff that I'm telling you now. And then I got lazy. And so what I'm doing now is rectifying all those mistakes that I made for a while. Don't get me wrong. Like I went off and was doing other social media channels and I was doing some other things, more affiliate marketing and network marketing. And I'm happy to teach you any stuff how to do that without actually harassing your friends and family. That is a whole nother story though. But what I realized, even though I was good at doing videos and marketing on other social media platforms, my YouTube channel is the thing that has stood the test of time and has continued to be the most high leveraging thing in my whole business. Like that is a pretty big statement. Now there's plenty of other things that we can add that will also help you grow your YouTube channel in 2021. But these are really the main things. If you don't have these things right, these 10, 11 things that I've talked about today, I know 
know that your YouTube channel will not grow in 2021 the way that you are wishing that it would. And if you do these things, you're going to have a much higher chance of you striking gold on YouTube and attracting sales to your business like you want it to. If you have any other tips that you want to add to these, please add them to the conversation that we have here on YouTube in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I have another video here on this page. If you want to keep diving deep into this topic, click the next video and keep watching. See you in the next one.